In this video, we'll use the three steps to sketch method to get a good graph of y equals cosine of 2x. So we have our outline of our method and we have our grid. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we want to find the essentials. That's step one. So we'll find A and B. We will calculate the period and decide what scale labels to use. So remember, this method is for any equation that's in the general form, y equals a cosine bx. So these are your unshifted cosine graphs. And once you know that, it's very clear what a and b will be. So a is an understood one in front of our cosine, so our amplitude is one. That's the distance from the midline up to the maximum or the midline down to the minimum. And then B, in this case, is 2. And B tells you a lot of information. Um, the first thing to know is that it tells you how many cycles of your graph will happen between 0 and 2 pi. So that's a nice thing to know. You can look at your graph at the end and make sure that that's true. Uh, the other way that B is really useful is to calculate the period. So for our cosine graph, we should calculate it using 2 pi divided by B. So in this case, we'll have 2 pi divided by 2, or a period of pi. And remember, period is just the length of a horizontal cycle. All right, so now we can decide what scale labels to use. And this is how we are, we are going to count and label our tick marks. So with this method, I like to take the period and divide it by 4 and use that value for my horizontal scale labels. Um, then this just ensures that our key points in the next step, so our pattern, all those key points will align with our horizontal tick marks. And that just makes for a nice, neat graph. So we will use pi over 4, or just period divided by 4, to label our horizontal tick marks. And the vertical scale, you usually don't have to do as much work. Using a, the value of a, can typically be really good. Um, it's 1, so that really is... A great move in this case. All right, so let's go ahead and label and then we'll move on to step two. So we're counting by pi over four. So count one pi over four, two pi over four, which simplifies, three pi over four, four pi over four. Okay, your fourth tick mark using this method should always match your period. That's a great double check. So we'll stop. Okay, pi, that makes sense. All right, and let's keep counting. So we have five pi over four, six pi over four, which reduces, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four, so that's two pi. So hopefully you're seeing that this setup is going to um, get us two full cycles between zero and two pi. Um, that's looking a little bit ahead, but it's just nice to know, okay, the pattern is four key points. So getting to two pi, we have to do that twice. All right, and let's pause and label the other side of the x-axis. So all the same values, just negative. All right, so we have our whole x-axis labeled now, and we can label our vertical axis just counting by ones. All right, so we've really done the hard part. We've analyzed the equation. We know all the key information. Um, and now we can move to step two, plot key points. So all you really need to know is the pattern. Once you've got one cycle, you really are golden from there. So our pattern for cosine is maximum, zero, minimum, zero. And that's as long as you don't have a negative out front, which vertically reflects the graph. Okay, so we don't see any negatives, so we know we're following our original pattern. And we know we will set our first point in the pattern on the y-axis. It will be our y-intercept. And so we look to A to know exactly where to set it. Since A is 1, we know we'll set our first point in the pattern, our maximum, on 0, 1. Okay, and now we can complete our pattern. And remember, we purposely designed this so that each horizontal tick mark will get a key point. So we have maximum 0 at pi over 4. The next point will be a minimum. It happens at pi over 2 and it'll just have the opposite value of our maximum, so the opposite value of a, negative 1. And then our final point in our pattern will be another 0. 
and this time at 3 pi over 4. So you hopefully can see the sine curve forming with these key points. And let's go ahead and put another point, which will just start our next cycle. Um, but you can see that we have a full cycle of cosine here. Our period is pi. All right, so let's go ahead and do step three. Sketch this. We'll sketch our cycle. Okay. We have one cycle of cosine 2x. So now let's repeat this and, and get a really nice graph um, that goes for several cycles. The great thing is you just repeat the same pattern that you just did in green. So I'll use a different color just so we can distinguish from the original. But we do the same pattern. So maximum, zero, minimum, zero. Repeat. Okay, so we have a nice cosine curve there. And let's go ahead and do a couple cycles on the other side. So I like to move a multiple of four away from the origin. So we can start at negative two pi. We know there will be a maximum there. So it's eight tick marks away. So max, zero, minimum, zero. Maximum, zero, minimum, zero. So you really can feel that cosine is a periodic function. It is cyclic, it just repeats itself. So once you know that basic cycle, then you are able to sketch as much of the graph as you want. All right, one final thing to point out, let's go back to B. We said B should be the number of cycles that happen between zero and two pi. And so we should have two. Let's just trace it and see, we do have two. So we have a half cycle, a full cycle a half cycle, a full cycle. So that's two full cycles that happen between zero and two pi. So we should feel really confident that our graph is accurate um, and is a really good sketch of y equals cosine two x.